What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here with esteemed colleague, Mr. Fantastic, Ryan Muckenhern, uh, to talk about a cartridge, naturally. And uh, this one, I hope I'm not going to start one of those uh, Texans wisdom things over here, but I'm going to say it is the 708, a.k.a. 7mm08 or 7mm08, uh, 7m08, I don't know. I'll take them all. So um, this is a cartridge that has been widely requested from a lot of our listeners out there and uh, in, on Instagram, YouTube comments. So keep those suggestions and requests coming. And uh, we know there's a lot more out there that we'll get to. But okay, talk about the 708, Ryan. That's how I'm just going to say it. Uh, okay, so commercialized Wildcat. As many things Yet were again. on, uh, yeah. As many things were on the 308 case, um, and it's a pretty old Wildcat too. I I don't know exactly when the first one hatched, but people have been monkeying with the 308 almost immediately after it got minted, uh, and so we just take a 308 case, we neck it down to seven millimeters. So we're putting a slightly smaller diameter bullet <clears throat> with a higher BC, a higher sectional density, into the same case, mm-hmm. um, and it does afford the shooter a few things um probably get away with a little bit less recoil because we're generally pushing a lighter weight bullet Mm -hmm. uh, but we're pushing a bullet of higher bc um so we actually have a little bit of an improvement on the downrange trajectory uh, when compared to uh, its parent cartridge of 308 now when you say i'm and sorry to interrupt right away but when you say a little bit higher bc that Mm -hmm. that doesn't directly correlate to the fact that it's a slightly smaller bullet does it Kind of, yeah. So uh, as you get smaller bolts, do they just automatically get a little bit better BC? or With respect to bullet diameter, length, and weight. Um, so a, a comparably weighted 140 grain, 30 caliber projectile will have a lower BC than a 140 grain, 7 millimeter projectile because we're going to narrow the diameter but generally add length. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Correct. Got it. Um, so as long as we're keeping weights approximate. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, case uh, case capacity there? Same? Same, yep. Okay, so smaller, yep. lighter, yep. more slender bullet, if yep. you will. Yep. Same case. Same case. case. Okay. Yep. One thing you run into, though, with a 7, you know, compared to a 30, is that 7-millimeter bullet in a comparable weight will be generally longer. Right. So depending on whether you're buying factory ammunition or hand-loading your ammunition, you may end up kind of eking into that case gotcha. capacity a little bit. And maybe that's where some of this cartridge isn't, um, I guess, as heralded as maybe it's 30 caliber counterpart, um, which is really interesting. This is a cartridge that for as long as I have been aware of it has kind of taken an unfortunate back seat to the 308. Um, a lot of people say it's like a youth cartridge. And in like in talking to some folks, well, I don't know. It's a good question. And talking to some folks, they, they almost would rather have a 243 than a 708 because it just it doesn't seem, and this isn't everybody. I know a lot of guys that shoot 708 and love it. Um, Ammo I lo- would be maybe a little easier to find for a 243. Yeah, yeah, but it's almost like they, they think that the 708 is some sort of like watered down 308. I, I'm not really sure. Huh. Um, but it does not get the credit that it should because it is a remarkable cartridge. Um, it's very efficient. It's very easy to shoot. It is a good cartridge for a smaller statured shooter, a youth, um, or somebody who just doesn't like recoil. Yet again, well, I, bet, because... I bet the same people are like, oh, 6.5 Creedmoor, sweet cartridge. Yeah, magic. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's a good point. And, and so, you know, we get into this perpetual battle of improvement to try to, you know, squeeze water from a stone out of a lot of these cartridges. And you're like, oh, the 6.5 Creedmoor is a better option. And you could say, yes, it does have a higher BC bullet in comparable weights because, again, we're necking it down or squeezing that bullet diameter down about a half a millimeter compared to the 7, which is a little more than half a millimeter compared to the 30. Um, and, yes, you are doing that. You're getting a higher BC, but you're not pushing it at the same velocity. A 708 with a 140 is going to push that bullet faster than a 6.5 with a 140. Really? Yes. Hmm. Um and so there's some give and take, and, and I think a lot of folks will immediately go to, well, what's the drop at 1,000 yards? Um, and they're like, see, the 6.5's got it licked. And it should. Yeah, 6.5 at 1,000 yards, what's a little over 10? Yeah, a little over 10 mils maybe, but um, it depends on the load. And that's all well and good, and I think we have to like look at application. Yeah, if you're going to shoot 1,000 yards and this is going to be your long-range 1,000-yard gun, 6.5 will probably be a better option for you 
on just the ammunition availability alone. Uh, but for practical, like hunting distances, and this comment I'm sure is going to uh, fire up some of the masses. It's, I mean, take your pick. Do you, do you want a smaller diameter bullet at a lower velocity or do you want a slightly larger diameter bullet at a slightly higher velocity? I, I mean, the critter is not really going to be able to tell the difference, in my opinion. I don't shoot game very far away, but that's just me. Like 300 yards and then the, probably just doesn't you, matter. No, not at all. No. Yeah. Execute a shot that is ethical and in the right spot and it's, it's a dead animal. And the the recoil, uh, you know, discrepancy or difference with the seven mm eight being lighter, that's just due to that's just a a, a lighter bullet, lighter weight bullet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, but I did make some interesting comparisons with a cartridge, another seven millimeter that everybody adores, which Uh-oh. I I don't adore. Um, I think it's a pretty hyped up cartridge. It's a good cartridge. It's a fine cartridge. It has accounted for tens of thousands of of. Um, you know, animals harvested. No, it's uh, it's good for you if you have one. Yeah, <laughs> seven millimeter rem mag, which another one we've heard a few uh, <laughs> uh-huh. requests for. Uh, and it's at, it, when it was introduced, it, there was nothing like it. It was a speed demon in comparison in today's day and age with modern propellant and case technology. It's okay, um, but it's a really cool contrast to put it to put up against the seven millimeter weight or to put the seven millimeter weight against. Uh, so I went into my Barnes uh, reloading manual, <clears throat> opened the page to 708 Remington and 7mm Rem Mag, and I selected the 140 grain TTSX bullet, which is a really great projectile for anybody looking for a stellar hunting bullet, uh, and ran some numbers, or at least this is the numbers that Barnes posted. Uh, max velocity with 140 grain TTSX from a 708 Remington with a 47.8 grain charge of Reloader 17 was 2,911 feet per second. Not bad. Nothing to not sneeze bad. at. No, no, not at all. Very, very respectable. A bit higher than what I'm used to out of the 6.5 Creed. Yep. Uh, 7 millimeter Rem Meg with a maximum charge of 68 grains of Reloader 22. So same powder family, different burn rate, uh, 3,169. 258 foot advantage to the 7 Rem Meg. Okay, that's notable. Where it gets really interesting is it takes 20 grains more powder, a 41% increase in powder volume for a 9% increase in velocity. Hmm. That is a womp womp in my book. <laughs> so we're, we're, we need to get MC Ryan one of the keyboards with womp, the noises. Womp, womp. That's pretty good. I guess we just have Jim. There right. we go. <laughs> So we're, we look at the, the uh, charge volume on the 708 and how fast it can push a 140. We take that same bullet and we put it in the 7 rem mag, and it does push it faster. There's no question about it. The numbers don't lie. 258 feet per second is significant, but it does so at the cost of a ton more powder and quite a bit more recoil. Why is it not um, as efficient? Then that's what I presume to be efficiency when people talk about an efficient design, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes so, not as much powder to produce. No, the seven oh eight Remington is more efficient than the seven. No, Remington. I know. Wait, yeah. So what is it that makes it more efficient? Like, is there balance between bullet diameter, projectile weight, case volume, pressures, uh, a whole slew of things? It's weird because when you're talking about bullet diameter and all that stuff, I mean it's the same. Yeah, it's the same projectile. Yes, literally oh. the same bullet. Um, so that, that to me is pretty stark. Like when I would look mm-hmm. at that, if I was like, okay, I need a rifle. It's not going to beat the smoke out of me. Um, I want to be able to carry it too. I don't really want it heavy. Um, that's my kind of style of rifle that I like. The 708 in this case would be the better choice for the game that I hunt at the distances that I would shoot them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, looking at comparable arms. So I, I'm just going to say like a, a, a Weatherby Mark V, either a six lug or a nine lug, nine lug being the large belted magnums, like a seven rem mag, 300 wind mag, seven Weatherby, et cetera, or a six lug for smaller cartridges like 243, 65 Creedmoor, 708, 308, et cetera. You're going to save a pound of weight on the gun just alone. And then the guns like dimensions are going to be scaled. So it's a more portable, packable rifle, um, which I prefer. And <clears throat> when it comes down to, well, how does that cartridge perform at, at, at range. What does 258 feet per second give us? And if we're just looking at drop, we're not looking at energy, we're not looking at velocity, I just drop, um, which depending on who you ask is possibly more important because can we get the bullet there quickly and with minimal correction? 
drop at 400 yards. Uh, this is in Miller radians for those listening. Uh, seven millimeter 08 Remington would require 1.42 mils of drop. Pretty with, easy. Yep. With a 200 yard zero here at Vortex. So at our, our current weather conditions as of about an hour ago. About a what? Eight, 800, 900 feet? Uh, 1146. We're at 1146. Correct. No, well, learn something new every day. A little yeah. higher than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so 1.42 at 400 yards. That's a pretty flat shooting cartridge. Not bad. Not a lot of dial input. Um, Switch over to the 7 Rem Meg, drop at 400 yards, 1.16. So we're saving, we'll just, we'll just say three-tenths of a mil. Yeah, three clicks. That's not a lot. Um, go to 600 yards, which is about as far as I would be comfortable shooting a game animal. Right. 708 Remington, 3.33 mils. That's pretty good. Yep, pretty flat. 7 Rem Meg, 2.73 mils. Still not huge. No. No. Nope. You got yourself, yeah, about 0. 0.6, right? Yep. So... You know, a little over half a mil of adjustment. Is it significant? Certainly. Yep. It's it's measurable. It's there. But it's not, like, huge. And so at the distances that I would personally ethically use a cartridge like this on a game animal that I would hunt with a cartridge like this, I still put my favor to the 708. Hmm. I think it's a better design. Can we, uh, okay, people are used to these going over a little, a little over 10 minutes. I just want to throw out, like, my personal last thought here, which is you hear about in a lot of competition circles and rings and stuff and precision guys, 6mm, right? That's mm-hmm. the new hotness, right? Mm-hmm. These little bullets, not a lot of recoil. You have all kinds of control over the gun. Follow-through is excellent, whatever. 6.5 Creedmoor. Everybody knows 6.5. 6.5 is like, uh, I don't know, it, it, it might as well be... 308 these days. Yeah, 308 these days, right? Yep. And then from there, we talk about 30 cals and up. Mm-hmm. Why does everybody skip over the 7 millimeter? Now, there's a lot of requests that obviously came in for this podcast, so it's not like it's completely forgotten, but I hardly ever hear anybody go buku crazy over it. Like, I don't know of anybody in competition shooting 7 millimeter for precision stuff. Pretty rare. And I just you just don't hear about it. Like, people don't get crazy about it. I think, and this is speculation because I don't shoot PRS or that kind of thing. <clears throat> in that game... Um, the 6.5 bullets would have the advantage with BC. I, I mean, we've got to, like, right. look at everything into the into the pie here. So, like, BC, weight. Um, you then know. they go and shoot 30 cal. They shoot 308s, and they talk about how great it is. Yeah. I think it's a culture thing, too. The 7 millimeter will mm-hmm. have its time. It, I, Do you think? Do you I think, think it's kind of. I think it's kind of going away. You don't think it'll come back and be, you know, where now people are trying starting to do two seventy precision, you know, because yep, it's cool and it's new. I, and you don't think that the seven millimeter will ever be like people's. I mean, we oh, t- it's cool again. We talked about you know sevens just never really gaining favor, with the exception of the seven rim mag. With the exception of the yep. seven rim mag, but I still, I still feel like. By and large, right, historically, you know, and I guess I'll kind of lump them into that category, but like in America, yep. you know, and I guess from hunting, you know, yep. 270-06, right? Yep. Like the seven, there were guys that have it. They love it. They're like eternal advocates of it, yep. like 777, seven, seven, you got to get a seven. But does that, but then I also feel like, yeah, you talk about six millimeters. It's like all, all of a sudden we're we're like ready for it, but the six is okay, but the seven's not, not six. <laughs> I think Not six, again, I think seven. a lot of it a lot of Seven's it comes into number. into clever marketing number. clever marketing and like cultural acceptance. Um, there's nothing wrong with the bullet diameter. And actually to go back to seven millimeter Remington, it's a fantastic cartridge. It really is. Um, a lot of sevens that didn't make it that should have made it because they are exceptional. Seven Rem Meg. Well, no, okay, seven Rem Meg made it. Seven Weatherby. Seven Psalm. Seven Psalm, seven Wisdom. Uh, seven STW, mm-hmm. which is which is an absolute laser beam, um, and what's the STW stand for? Shooting Times Westerner. Okay. Yep. So it's an eight millimeter Remington Magnum case. Okay. Neck down to seven millimeter. Okay. So okay. there's there's a goofy one made into a goofier one. I would say the seven STW is more popular than the eight millimeter Rem Mag, but um, so there's maybe there's just something about the bullet diameter that isn't inspiring to people. I'm not sure if we hop the Atlantic and we go over to Europe, 7x57, 7x64. Um, there's some awesome cartridges over there that are 7s. Um, that people like them. They kill fallow, roe, red stag, muntjac, Chinese water deer, you name it. It's a great cartridge. 
Interesting. Yeah. Come on, Jack. We gotta hear uh we gotta hear the listeners' thoughts out there on the seven millimeter projectile. Um and uh you know, I, I, I know looking back on some of the comments on YouTube too, I, there's some of these cartridge podcasts have gotten people a little riled up. I bet. There's still people still bring up the white claw comment regarding whatever cartridge Did I say it that? was. I, I think it was you actually. Whoops. I'm gonna um, have to I'm, look. full disclosure, I've never had a white claw. <laughs> I don't I don't know what it's all about. People seem to like them, so maybe that was like a... I think it was in the 22250 podcast, that I, sounds, I believe. That sounds familiar. Somehow the White Claw came up. Yeah. People, that chaps and butts. They're okay. nice on a boat. All right. What <laughs> do you I, say? No, Mark has no, a final thought. I, you finish so, this out. I We're at 15 it. minutes. It. I had a cup. Okay. Here's one thing that I like. I like that you compared it to the 7 rim because I feel like it generally gets compared to like the 308, the 260, maybe 65 Creed nowadays. Yep. Um, so I like that contrast. I think we should speak to just real quickly because I am, I see a lot of the benefits of that. But what about uh, a dude that wants factory ammo? That's a tough oh, one. Okay, fair point. Yep. So it because it's not so exceptionally popular, there aren't so many phenomenal options for ammunition. That's not to say you can't get it because it's still commercially loaded by Remington, Winchester, Federal, Hornady. Right. They're all out there. If you walk into, you know, the KC General Store in KC, Wyoming, are you inclined to find 7 millimeter 08 Remington on the shelf? I don't know that I've ever seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because it isn't a cartridge in tremendous popularity. So but it's not quite to the level of 300 wisdom where nobody gets it, but it's always <laughs> on the shelf. I've got pictures to prove it, Jim. <laughs> um, that's a good point. I think it is, it's, a, it's a cartridge that is best... If you're going to shoot factory ammo at whitetails and mule deer and pronghorn, that's fantastic too. But you can you can squeeze quite a bit more out of it if you hand load it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Play, playing with like cartridge overall length and and Seating really depth. yeah mm. really taking advantage of high BC projectiles in the seven millimeter class, you can do a lot with it. Mm, interesting. Um, and the same thing for like two eighty Ackley. That's a seven that's actually gaining some traction these days. Um, you play around with the seat depths. You, you maximize the the case capacity and its potential. You get a pretty hellacious cartridge, uh, but not not a lot of folks are jumping to get it. I don't want anybody to think it's just a a youth and and small stature shooter cartridge either, though, because it's not. No. Yeah, I I would think that anything that you would feel comfortable hunting with a two seventy, a thirty odd six, a three oh eight. Um, or a seven rem mag or a two eighty Ackley, you could hunt with a seven oh eight, and it wouldn't you wouldn't really tell a difference. Hmm. Yeah. Good to know. Yep. Perfect, excellent ending. Mark, I'm glad you did it, even though it brought us to. Now I'm sorry minutes. for the. It's all right. Yep. Uh, all right. As usual, let us know what else you want to hear about in terms of cartridges in the comments. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. See Bye. Seven red mag. Dude, that's like you, you told somebody that their baby baby's ugly. Kind of. Uh. Hey, ugly my baby. baby. My ba- baby's not... Me. And you're ugly. Yes, right. <laughs> this is a good cartridge. I've only owned one. I've never loaded for it. Paul. Which one? Red Mag or... No, oh, wait. no I won't own a 7 Red Mag. That's fair. Yeah, 708. I was in a quest to buy a Browning A-Bolt. I wanted one in the worst way. Mm-hmm. And I kept going through A-Bolts, and they just weren't what I was after. I had a used stainless stocker, just like yours, come into the gun shop. The guy traded it on, I don't even remember what. I'm like, I'm going to take that one home. And so I took it home, and one box of Winchester Combined Technologies 140-grain ballistic tips, and it shot like half minute. Mm. Great gun. And then I, I decided you not to keep it. You sold it? Huh. Oh, you just didn't keep it? No. I don't know why. Was Paul's Forbes rifle a 708? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I remember when he bought it, and I was like, 708. Interesting choice. I just didn't know... I, and that, didn't know a lot about it. That seems to be everybody's reaction to it. They're like, oh. I think because they just don't know. They yeah. don't know about it. Yeah. I think that's probably why so many people requested it. Mm-hmm. I think they were just like, uh, if the funny thing is, every can, time. Can you clear up the 708? When I when I see the requests come in for these cartridge vi- episodes, most of the requests are on cartridges where I can guarantee to you they are people wanting to know about a cartridge they've heard about one time and are interested in, but 
probably are never going to get. Right, right. You know, like mm-hmm. you see all the, like, people throw out, like, Grendels and weird stuff, 284 Winchester, yep. 7mm08, I mean, all this stuff. And they're just, I'm like, you're literally just putting that out there just because you're curious about it, but you don't want to get one to find out. <laughs> well, I actually, I like that better than, let's talk about something. One that everybody has. That everybody has. Exactly. Yeah. Which I, I agree. I think it's, yeah. but. One I think we should talk about, because I think it's kind of a cool little cartridge, is the 204. Yeah. The Ruger or just the 204? 204 Ruger. It's a cartridge I could never get to break 4,000 feet per second. What about the 17 rim fireball? Never loaded for it. Dude, we got to talk about some of those weird 17s sometimes. Some goofy ones. There is some strange little, like, whenever I'm in the store and I'm looking and the ammo shelves are cleared out. I always come down. Always I, I always come down and I'm like, I'm like, ooh, 22. And then you walk up and you're like, no, it's 17. And it's like 17 HMR, 17 what, whatever else. I don't HM2, know. HM2, Wisdom. HM2 is the sweetheart. Why don't, why don't more people get the 17s? I've always wanted to own a 17 because it seems it's expensive. Yeah. I mean, compared they to 22. They seem cool. Isn't it just 17 like Remington? Super, Yep. Isn't it like a Shot super a zippy, a like rabbit perfect thing. rabbit squirrel? Oh yeah, it's an awesome cartridge. Yeah, I just I, I want to get one. There again, that one got kind of tainted. When they came out with that cartridge, we got our first load of I think they were Marlin nine seventeen Vs. Were the guns wait which cartridge? Seventeen uh, HMR. Okay, yeah. And there's a competitor gun shop like four miles down the road, <clears throat> and that guy was telling people it's a perfect three hundred yard coyote rifle. No, it's, it's like not. A, it's like a perfect. 100-yard coyote rifle. It's like a perfect 60-yard coyote. <laughs> yeah, I think you nailed it right there. <laughs>